Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And if you all could just stand up on your feet and worship the Lord with us this morning. Come on, we've come this morning just to give God praise, to give God honor for all that he's done for the week that has passed and the weeks to come. Come on, if you all just clap your hands with us. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Hey, whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Hey, whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side you're leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Until I die. Trust in the Lord. 
feel like being in church today, give the Lord a praise. Whose side are you leaning on? We're leaning on the Lord's side. Truly, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me now in our doxology and call to worship. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I have rest thee of doorkeep in the house of my God, and it dwells in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is his holy temple, and all the earth sings silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing it to the Lord a new song, for he has done a marvelous thing. Make it joyful, Lord. Amen. Now we're going to join this wonderful male tones and song as we sing hymn number 363, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder.
And after that, we're going to have our call and response. And then a special treat, Brother Justin Timoni will read the Old Testament lesson, and Brother John Simmons will read the New Testament lesson. this morning. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the cool breeze. Thank you for the, the birds, if you heard them this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us all together in this house, Lord, uh, physically as well as virtually, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the smiling faces. Thank you for the faces that might have not been smiling, Lord, but when they step into the house, they can feel your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the music, for the the brothers up there that are just representing you, Lord God, allowing your glory, Lord God, to shine through their voices, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for everyone in this church right now that's that's hurting, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for anyone who is in bereavement, Lord. Thank you for those who are nervous right now, Lord God, because they're waiting on a phone call or they're waiting to hear about a family member who may be sick, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for comforting them right now, Lord. Thank you for those who have just suffered loss, Lord God, 
Thank you for bringing peace upon their hearts, Lord God, peace upon their households, peace upon their families, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for providing ways, Lord God, in ways that we couldn't imagine, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to just rest upon us, Lord, to pick us up at the times that we are just broken, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for just being who you are, for being good. Though we suffer trials, Lord God, though the night may seem so long, Lord God, though the nights may be restless, Lord God, thank you, Lord, that we know that joy comes in the morning. We know that good comes in the morning. We know that peace comes in the morning. We know that your light will still shine, Lord God, through the darkness, Lord. We pray right now for those who are, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for each mother, Lord. Thank you for each mother who just had a child. Thank you for each mother that just lost a child. Thank you for each mother, Lord, that uh, is awaiting to have a child, Lord God. Thank you for bringing peace upon them, Lord God. Thank you for blessing them with healing, Lord God. Thank you for blessing them with uh, help, Lord God. Thank you for blessing them with people who will, who will stand around them, Lord God, who will be a village, Lord God, to them, Lord, who will help them, Lord God, when they're not sure what to do or where to go, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for those, those who are alone right now, Lord God, who can't be around anybody else right now, Lord God, who are sick, who are in the hospitals, who are shut in, Lord God. Thank you for those people that give them calls, the people that give them a little bit of hope, Lord God, through encouraging words, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for opening our hearts this morning, our minds, our spirits, Lord God. Thank you for opening our ears, Lord God, to be able to hear your word this morning and to be able to take in whatever it is that you have for us, Lord God. Allow the words that come out of Pastor Black's mouth to just be straight from you, Lord God, to be spoken by the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in his spirit and allow it to just flow from his mouth, Lord God. Allow our ears and our spirit, Lord God, to take it in and to not hear Pastor Black, but to hear you speaking to us, Lord God, to hear your words, to hear your encouragement, to hear your conviction, Lord God, and allow us to not hold the conviction in, Lord God, but to act on that conviction, Lord God, to know that we can trust that conviction because it comes from your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help those who have unforgiveness in their hearts, Lord God, to pour out forgiveness on whomever it is Help them realize that it's not hurting the other person. It's hurting them, Lord God. It's hurting their relationship with you, Lord God, whoever that may be. Just bless them, Lord God. Open up their hearts and their minds and their spirits, Lord. Open up my heart and mind and spirit as well, Lord God. And we just praise you this morning, Lord God. We praise you and we lift up your name, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. And we pray all these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You've been so good to me And I've got to say thank you Oh, thank you, Jesus Thank you Say you've been You've been so good to me And i got to say Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Lord, you've, been you've been so good to me. And I got to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. to say thank you thank you thank you lord thank you you've been my rock you've been so rock and shield oh and i've got to say thank you thank you jesus thank you lord thank you 
gotta say thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just gotta say thank you. Thank you. Oh, say thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. from Psalms 93. All right. Jehovah, Jehovah reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. Jehovah is clothed with strength. He hath greater himself therewith. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of the old, thou art of from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Jehovah. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves, Above the voice of many waters, the mighty breaks of the sea, Jehovah on high is mighty. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Jehovah, forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and doers of the word. I'll be reading John, the 18th chapter, starting at the 33, 33rd verse, excuse me. John, the 18th chapter, starting at the 33rd verse, and it reads, Then Pilate entered in, into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Then, excuse me, thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate, therefore, the said unto him, Art thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and of this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the, excuse me, unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my, ver my voice. May the word, may the, for God's people, amen. <laughs> Dynamic duo for those wonderful selections. I mean, scripture readings. Let's show them a little love. From all that dwells below the skies. From all that dwells below the skies. Let the Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the Sister Aline Mitchell, to welcome us and read the morning announcements. Good morning, church family. We are so happy to see each and every one of you and glad that you did not find a robbery to come out and give God thanks for all that he did for you this week. First, I would like to welcome our new visitors and um, we did not have visitors uh, sheet to present to them but I have their name and I'm going to ask them to stand. They're the Washington family and they're the guests of Sister Kirk. Washington family. Amen. Show them some family church life. All right. We thank you. And we also welcome those who are visiting with us uh, today um, by Zoom. As a reminder, the church school and worship service will be live streamed on Campbell's live streaming Facebook page and Zoom. The pastor will no longer live stream these events on his Facebook page. Campbell Chapel's virtual Christmas Eve movie flyer uh, is here and I'm going to remind you about it again so everyone will have an opportunity to show their talents and skills in our virtual Christmas Eve program. You're welcome to sing, dance, put together a family, skip whatever your heart desires. Uh, each family will come up with their own costumes and props and direct their own Christmas skit. A schedule of recording times will be provided in the next few days. For more information, please see Sister Vicki Smalls. Mount Zion AME Church cordially invite you to Thanksgiving celebration, which is today, November 21st at 4 p.m. Our own Pastor John Black will be the guest speaker and it will be by Zoom. The ID is 86 Zero six six four eight one nine one nine. The password three seven three four six eight. Password three seven three four six eight. Donate blood. Here's a way to give back in order to help someone's life. A $10 gift card will be donated. You can use those cards at Target, Walmart, or Amazon. And it is on Monday, November the 29th, from 11 to 2 p.m. at St. Stephen AME Church, 710 Main Street in Hardyville. All donors will receive a one blood blanket and a $10 e-gift card, plus a checkup including blood pressure, temperature, iron count, pulse, and cholesterol streaming. To make an appointment, please visit www.oneblood.org. Donate now and use sponsor code 62184. I'm sure some of this information will be out there in case you didn't bring paper and pencil today in order to take down that information. Um, Brother Justin Timoni have a thank you card to let everyone know how much he appreciates the love and support that has been a big blessing for him and his family. Justin says, I appreciate everything that Campbell Chapel AME has done for me. 
Love, Justin Timoni. Um, also, we have uh, Mr. Martin Grandson, Belize is visiting from SCAD, along with his sister and mom, Makisha. Please let us remember our sick and shut-in members with uh, prayers. If you can visit, do so if you can, or if you cannot, give them a phone call. And uh, as we go along to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving uh, next week, or beginning of this week, really today's Sunday, let us be very careful, make sure we do practice all of the things about safe distancing, etc. Have a safe Thanksgiving. God bless each and every one of you. And now you will hear from our beloved Pastor Black. Amen. I want to accent a few of the announcements. First, I do want to welcome our visitors and welcome our part of our family that's visiting with us, the Martin family, as well as the Washingtons in the back. Uh, they are welcome bags at the check-in center. I wanna be sure you all get them. So please stop there and pick up your welcome bag on the way out. But uh, even though we're in the pandemic, we can still show them some Campbell Chapel love. <laughs> so happy you are with us. Uh, technology continues to move ahead. And so you see a little square thing in front of your pew that's called a QR code. And I, I don't know why, but for most phones, maybe not all, you can simply go to your photo mode and focus in on that QR code and some pop-up will happen. Some little pop-up menu will come up. And when you click on that pop-up menu, you will see today's bulletin. This is the beta run. We're just testing it out today. Next week, the bulletin will look a lot nicer. We discovered that it depends on what device on, on the margins on it. So we're going to try to figure it out so that the margins stay the same and you'll be able to enjoy the bulletins and the words to the hymns. And every round, as the hymn said, goes higher and higher. Finally, I, I'm going to encourage everyone to be a part of uh, our Thanksgiving service today at 4, joint service between Campbell Chapel and Mount Zion. Uh, Campbell Chapel is providing a preacher. Mount Zion is hosting on Zoom. We sent this out by constant contact, uh, but if you need information or help, the desk out front can help you get logged in at 4 o'clock, and we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. Even though the male tones didn't know this, they're going to be my musical selection, and we've already snatched one of their old selections, and they're going to be singing for us as a part of that service, and we're going to have a really good time. Amen? One of the blessings of Zoom is you can have two congregations over 150 miles apart worshiping at the same time together. Isn't that something? You can't beat God doing his thing. I do have one other uh, announcement. It may sound personal, but it's not. Uh, we have a lot of seniors who need a little help. Everybody needs some help. We all need some help. One of our seniors need uh, that wonderful young adult or teenager to come and help around the house for a few hours. This senior is willing to pay $12 an hour. And we'll take two, if there's two, and pick them up and bring them back home, whatever needs to be done to get them there to help out. But it's not so much the $12 an hour. I'm looking for that young person with a heart to say, let me help. And the, the uh, $12 an hour is encouragement. But your heart should say, yes, I want to help. There's some seniors that can't give $12 an hour that need some help also. So I, I'm going to encourage uh, some young people to reach out to me today. And I will put you in touch with that particular senior. And we'll get some work happening at that person's house. It's just housework right around the house and yard. You know, not, nothing hard, nothing tough. Uh, something you can do. Uh, so please reach out to me. What's the minimum age? I don't know. I'd say maybe 12. Ah, there you go. There you go. What's the maximum age? I don't know. As young as you feel. Amen? It is now giving time. 
And you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. Amen. We're, we're opening up a little more each week because we're getting a little safer each week. More people are being vaccinated. More people are getting booster shots. So uh, those who have already given, we thank you. But if there's someone in the building that needs to give, raise your hand and the ushers will come to you. And after the choir has finished singing, we're going to bring the ushers back up for all things come of thee. Male tones, do your thing. different age. Just a couple of minutes ago, I asked for a volunteer, and someone has already voluntold their stepson. You see how God works? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So uh, we will be reaching out and making sure that the volunteers get in touch with that particular senior. Amen. It is my honor and my delight to present the greatest male chorus in all African Methodism, Campbell Chapel's Male Tones. Receive them now with hearty applause.
I was staying and somebody touched me oh, I was singing and somebody touched me oh, I was singing and somebody touched me and I know I know it was Jesus. I said I know. I know it was Jesus. I know. I know it was Jesus. He saved my soul. Save my soul. I was shouting, and somebody touched me. Yes, it did. I was shouting. Somebody touch me, oh Lord. I was shouting. And somebody touch me. And I know, I know it was Jesus. I said I know, I know it was Jesus. Oh, I know, I know it was Jesus. Because he say, save my soul. Somebody touch me. me. Oh Lord, I was praying. praying. Down on my knees, Lord. Touch me. Come on, I was praying. praying. Somebody touch, touch me. me. And I know, I know it was Jesus. I said I know, yeah. I know it was Jesus. Oh, I know it was Jesus. Cause he saved, he saved my soul. I was praying. And somebody touch me. Come on in there and help me sing. Pray. Oh, Lord. Somebody touch me. Yes, sir. I was praying. Oh, Lord. Somebody touch me. I know it was Jesus. Said I know, Lord. I know it was Jesus. I know. I know it was Jesus. It was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. It was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. On that tree, yeah, I know it was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. Do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. Wonder, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I know, I know, yeah. I know it was Jesus. I know, yeah. I know it was Jesus. I know. I know it was Jesus. I wonder, do you know? I know it was Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. I know it was Jesus. Do you do? I know it was Jesus. I wanna know, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I wonder, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. Nothing but the Holy Ghost. Nothing but the Holy Ghost. I wanna know, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I wanna know, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I wanna know, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I wanna know, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. I wanna know. Jesus, I know it was Jesus. Ain't he all right? I know it was Jesus. Ain't the man all right? 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 Ain't he all right? I know it was Jesus. Ain't he all right? I know it was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. I don't wanna be too long. I know it was Jesus. I feel alright. I know it was Jesus. 
I know it was Jesus. Come on and help me sing. Yeah. I know it was Jesus. Come on and help me sing. I know it was Jesus. Help me sing. I know it was Jesus. I know. I know it was Jesus. 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 Hear what I say. I know it was Jesus. Hear what I say. I know it was Jesus. Hear what I say, man. I know it was Jesus. Hear what I say, man. I know it was Jesus. I feel alright. I know it was Jesus. I feel alright. I know it was Jesus. I feel, I feel it. I know it was Jesus. Do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. Brother John, do you feel it? I know it was Jesus. Oh, yes, sir. I know it was Jesus. Oh, I know it was Jesus. Oh, 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 Lord. I know it was Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know it was Jesus. Oh, I know it was Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Feel it now. I know it was Jesus. Down in my soul, yeah. I know it was Jesus. Down in my soul. I know it was Jesus. Down in my soul. I know it was Jesus. Yeah. I know it was Jesus. I know. I know it was Jesus. I know, yeah. I know it was Jesus. Oh, I know. I know it was Jesus. I know, son. I know it was Jesus. I, 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 I know. I know it was Jesus. I know. Shouting shoes on. Yeah. Come on, play now. Come on and play, brother. Come on. Come on.
you, sir. I I'm going to borrow from Brother Gadsden. I feel all right. Do you feel all right today? Amen. The male tones, God used them. God used them to carry us to higher heights of praise and higher heights of worship. Oh, give the Lord a praise in the house today. Amen, amen. I know we all can't be in the building at the same time. And I thank God for Zoom. But there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Amen. We acknowledge the presence of God that's in this room right now. But God's also wherever you may be today. To our wonderful Bishop, Bishop Samuel Lawrence Green, and our supervisor, Phyllis N. Green. To the greatest presiding elder team in all African Methodism, presiding elder Philip C. Anderson, and his queenly wife, Sister Sandra A. Anderson. To the best thing God ever gave me after Jesus, Sister Donna Black. Amen, amen. And to her husband, to our ministry team, to our board of stewards, board of trustees, our class leader council, to our musicians, stewardess, ushers, ministry chairs, AV team, other officers, visitors, members, and friends, we greet you in the joy and the love of the Lord. We're in the middle of a sermon series entitled, no more manner. And I want to call your attention now to Joshua uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king." And it's fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the walls of the city will collapse and the army will go up, every man, everyone straight in. Let's pray. God, we need a word. A word that will change our lives for the rest of our lives. No one wants to hear from John Black. He has nothing of importance to say. But we do want to hear from you. So speak a word to him and speak a word through him that your people may be edified. Speak a word to him and speak a word through him so that someone will be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sermon title, No, I'm sorry, Wrong title came up for me. Stay in your lane. Oh, if we were not sociably distancing, I'd tell someone to touch a neighbor and say, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. We are in the middle of a sermon series entitled No More Manna. It's a concept that I'm still struggling to get out of me that God placed in me. I've touched on this several times in the past and and I feel it more than I can articulate it. So you all have to listen with an ear of understanding. After Moses died, Joshua became the leader of the children of Israel. He circumcised the young soldiers, celebrated the Passover, and began to eat the produce of the promised land. After those events took place, the manna stopped. Manna was God's supernatural vision for the children of Israel as they wandered in the wilderness. Scientists have explored this notion of manna. 
Some have come to believe that it was Treholus, Treholus, T-R-E-H-A-L-O-U-S. Treholus is a white crystalline carbohydrate made of two glyceroid uh, molecules joined together. It is one of the very few naturally occurring molecules that taste sweet, although it is half as sweet as our sugar. This is what Numbers 11 says about manna. After the manna was, and the manna was a coriander seed, and the color thereof was as the color of bedillium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in meals or beat it with the mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. But when Joshua took charge, the manna stopped. In our first sermon, we discovered that there's a God on the outside of us and there's a God on the inside of us. And the God on the inside of us begins to manifest that part of God's self when the manna stops. See, manna is the God out there. But there's also a God inside of us. And we have to be aware of that God inside of us. Not us, God in us. Many of the miracles that God performs, he does perform with the God outside of us. But God also performs many miracles with the God inside of us. If you thought Brother James Gatson just led that song, let me tell you something. That was the God inside of him. He's a talented brother, but he can't do that on his own. Amen? There's a God inside of us, and that God inside of us directs us, and that God inside of us empowers us to possess our promised land. In the second sermon, the children's sermon, we discovered that the battle is never ours. It's the Lord's. In last week's sermon, the pre-incarnated Christ appears as a soldier. And he has a sword in his hand. And Joshua realizes that the vision in front of him is a vision of God Almighty as if he was human. And Joshua falls on his face, begins to worship God. And as he begins to worship, God says to Joshua what he said to Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. The only other person to receive such instructions was Moses at the burning bush. God was talking to Joshua to let Joshua know, I got this. I'm in charge. Now we're shifting from me doing all the work to you working with me and allowing me to work through you. Because the only way you're going to possess the promised land is with this sword but not in your hand, in my hand. Y'all see where I'm going with this? We got to let this manna stop so we can activate that God inside of us. Now, Joshua didn't know how God was going to do it, but Joshua knew what Mama Nim, y'all know Mama Nim, what Mama Nim knew. The Lord will make a way somehow. So, he listened and marched around the city and saw that the victory was not his, but the Lord's. Today, we're reviewing that same uh, scenario, the Battle of Jericho, but we're looking at it through the lens of whose lane is whose lane and who should be in their lane. And we're going to explore that uh, with three Ps. So our sermon points today are three P's. And the first P is the plan. What we need to realize is that God had a plan for all of humanity before even the world began. And God is constantly working out God's plan for all of humanity. And that's God's job. And you say, Reverend, that seems mighty simple to say that. But see, I listen to how we pray. And we pray as if the plan is our job. 
We tell God what to do. God, go see about grandma. Wait a minute. God don't have a plan already in place. God, go fix my finances. God, go. We shouldn't be playing, telling God what to do. We should be praying that God will impart unto us a small part of his plan. Now, now some of this is semantics, and, and it's all right to tell God to bless grandma and them, but what we really should be praying is, and understanding that we're praying is, God, what is my role in mama getting healed? What is my role in my finances getting fixed? What is my role in raising my children in a godly way? What is my role in the social action of my nation? Show me your plan and show me my lane. There's a shift that takes place when we realize that we're not telling God what to do, but we're listening for his plan. It's a subtle shift, but it's an important shift so that when we're in prayer, we're spending more time listening and less time talking. You know, Mama Numb used to tell us, we got two ears. Y'all know the rest of it, right? One mouth. So we should do what? Twice as much as we talk. And we get in prayer and we tell God everything we want God to know. And you know what? He already knew that. He knew your finances were messed up. He knew, he knew it before you said anything about it. And less time listening to what he has to say back to us. Our lean is to hear our plan, that part of God's plan for our lives. And I don't want you to hear something I didn't say. It doesn't always mean that his plan for us will involve an activity or an active role. Sometimes God tells us, go to battle and I'll fight through you and I'll fight with you. But sometimes he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes he just tells us, offer unto the Lord a joyful sound. But whatever he tells us to do, that's our lean. Many, many times God is just calming our internal voices and our internal efforts so that we can be properly positioned to possess his promise. Our, our anxiety, our, our conversations with ourselves, our obstacles, the things we see with our eyes, all hamper the God inside of us flowing and working for us. That's why he says, be anxious for nothing. Just be at peace. I got this. There's a pandemic in the land, Lord. Be anxious for nothing. I know there's a pandemic, but your job is to be anxious for nothing. Well, Lord, I don't know how to be anxious for nothing. He said, well, pray over everything with thanksgiving, and I'll keep you anxious for nothing. Let the peace of God rule your heart. Lord, see, see that's, I'm almost on my second P, but let me go here a minute. That's our lean. How do you get the peace of God to rule your heart? He said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. That's our lean. Keep our mind on God, not on the bills, not on the pandemic, not on the political chaos out there. Keep our eyes on the cross. Keep our mind stayed on Jesus, and he will give us perfect peace. Which gives me to the second P, which is position. We don't understand that this very well, but there's a position for possessing God's blessings. There's some things God won't do until everything lines up. And when things aren't lining up, God's not moving. Some of us want God to heal our finances. Well, he won't heal our finances until we honor him with the first fruit of all our substance. He won't heal our finances until we learn how to put a little something away for a rainy day. He won't heal our finances until we learn how to run from debt. So the coordinates for standing under the windows of heaven and having him pour us out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive requires us doing those things. That is the position to be in 
to possess God's blessings. It amazes me on how many different scriptures have with it the coordinates for the blessing. The most powerful blessing we receive is the blessing of salvation. And to get that blessing, we have to acknowledge that we are sinners. That some folks are who are just too good to be saved because they think they're okay. They think they're all right. And every time God confronts them with who they are, they look over at somebody else and say, well, I'm better than him. I'm doing better than her. I never did what so-and-so did. And until we can confess that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself, I am not in a position to receive God's salvation. There is a position that we must be in. I used to hear these, uh, some of these very wealthy pastors you see on TV talking about position, and I always thought they meant business. Position your business so you can prosper. No, they mean get God's plan and execute that small part of God's plan that's for you. And you'll be in the right position. We touched on it. There's some places we can't get to without listening to that plan. We can't possess certain things and certain attitudes. Mama them is in my mind, I guess, because I'll be preaching at my sister's church today. But you know what Mama them used to say? Y'all know Mama them, right? Yeah. Say, God can't bless no mess. So if you're in the position of mess, God can't bless that. But if you get in the position of being a broken and contrite spirit, he'll move heaven and earth to bless you. So uh, we got the first P. We're praying and seeking and listening for God's plan. And then when we execute that P, we get to the proper position. Now, you say, well, how's this have to do with it? That's what Joshua did. Joshua prayed, and God said, here's the plan. March around Jericho seven days. Six days, do it quietly. That's a miracle in itself. Get church folks together, and they'll walk around it for six days, and nobody talking in God. That's a miracle all by itself, isn't it? Six days, do it quietly. On the seventh day, you're going to walk around seven days with seven priests in front of you, blowing the shafar. And when they blow the shafar, the walls of Jericho are going to come down. So what is the position? The position is marching around Jericho. And the position is not trying to figure out how the walls are going to fall. Scientists have been trying to figure that out for years. And in 1950, archaeologists discovered the walls of Jericho, and they said they were blown down. And they discovered that no two bricks were upon the other, and that all of the bricks were burnt with, were scarred with flames from uh, fire. We don't know how God did it. Some scientists think maybe it was an earthquake. Other scientists think it was some kind of cosmic sign of psychic wave. Maybe the marching of the feet destabilized the, the foundation of the wall. We don't know how God does what God does. And neither did Joshua. But they knew if we walk around this city seven days like God told us to do, if we blow the shafar like God told us to blow the shafar, if we praise him at the end like God told us to do, the walls will come down. Let me tell you something. If you listen for God's plan, if you position yourself where God told you to stand, your Jericho walls will come down. You will possess the final P. You will possess the blessing that God has promised you. How do you know, Pastor? How do you know we'll possess it? Because we serve a God who has never lost the battle. How do you know you possess it? We serve a God who said not one jot, not one tittle. Let me break that down in English. Not one comma, not one dot over the eye is going to fail of anything I've told you until heaven and earth pass away. Some people say, God, some people say, there's nothing God can't do. There's ain't something God can't do. God can't fail. There's 
There's some of us in this room right now looking at walls of Jericho. Oh, they're so intimidating. Scientists tell us there's no way to do this. Human experience tells us it rarely ever happens. We've seen so many people who've tried to do this and didn't get there. But I'm going to tell you this. If you do what God has told us to do, listen for his plan, seek him, say, Lord, speak to me, show me what I need to do. And then when he tells you to do it, and, and I just got a little nudge in my spirit. I thought I was done. I thought I was done. I was closing. I was closing, choir. I'm closing again. Okay. When he tells you, do it with a willing heart. And I thought I heard in my spirit that there's some people who know what God's will is for them, but they're not willing to do it with a willing heart. When he tells you what to do, do it with a willing heart. Here am I, send me. They might talk about you. They might criticize you. You might look strange. Do you think it didn't look strange for this army to be marching around the walls of a city for six days? Do you think the gossip wasn't out there? Those Israelites are crazy. They're crazy people, man. See them out there marching around the wall of the city for seven days? But we have to have that willingness. And if I'm hearing what the Lord is saying to me right now, he's saying, that's the battle for some of us accept his will and when we do that and position ourselves we will possess amen, amen. give the Lord a praise in the house amen. let's stand as I extend unto you the invitation to Christian discipleship perhaps there's someone in the house right now that does not know Jesus in the pardon of his or her sins. Or maybe you know the Lord, but you're not where you want to be. You want to grow a little more than you are. Maybe you backslid a little bit and you want to recover those years the caterpillar and the palmer worm took from you. The years the locust gathered. Whatever your situation, we invite you now to renew your relation or to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're in the house, you can raise your hand. I'll come to you. If you're out there on Zoom, put it in the chat and we'll reach out to you. But we want you to know that you know that you know that you've been born again. Choir, just give me one more second before you sing. If you're that person, just repeat these words with me. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Choir, lead us in our invitation. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. See, cause Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Can we lift that up? Say, Lord, Lord, whatever. Don't do it with 
around me. If you're looking for a blessing, just say, Lord, Lord, if you're blessing, if you're blessing, blessing in this season, don't do it, don't do it without me. Don't do it, don't do it without me. Lord, don't do it without us. Don't do it without us. Can we say that? Don't do it without us. Whatever you're standing in need of, don't do it without us. If it's a blessing or a miracle, don't do it without us. Lord, we're standing in the need of prayer. Don't do it without us. See, don't do it, don't do it without us. This is your time to petition God. Don't do it without us. Whatever you're standing in need of, don't do it without God, we need you. Don't do it, don't do it without us. Don't do it, don't do it without us. Amen. At this time, let's reaffirm our faith as we recite in unison the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin service, Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and third day all the rose seven from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forever. Amen. Amen.
we're going to give you a 30 second break. You may be seated and we'll start the church conference. So those who, who need to break, you got 30 seconds, you got 29, you got 28. And we're going to do this church conference in such a way that we'll be out of here in just a few minutes. Uh, amen. What a powerful worship experience. We do thank the male tones. Thank Brother Justin, Brother John, all up, Brother Saxton. Amen. Brother Terrence, all those involved. Those in the door, if you'll clear the door, we're going to go ahead and get started. Those in the door, if you'll clear the doors so we can start with the church conference. And we'll have you out of here before you know it. There are people at home who are just watching us. Okay. Well, I'm going to call now this church conference to order. Sister Effie Moon, who has been a big, big part of preparing for this, will be taking minutes. The agenda appears before you. I greet you in the joy and the love of the Lord. And we're going to go right into election results. We're going to start with those who ran unopposed. Next slide. Here, um, our annual conference delegate, um, Fred Hamilton was on the, on the um, ballot for delegate, and Aileen Mitchell was on for alternate. John Simmons for youth, ad young adult delegate. Aileen Mitchell for district steward, and Fred Hamilton for AV ministry. Uh, Sister, Ham Sister Mitchell and Brother Hamilton would like to switch positions. And so uh, we're going to put, she, uh, Mrs. Mitchell would like to be the delegate, and Brother Hamilton the alternate. We're going to put that vote up at the next church conference. But that's how the original ballot appeared. So uh, other than those two, John Simmons, uh, Ms. Mitchell as district steward, and Fred Hamilton as AV ministry has already been elected. Next slide. Christian Education Director, Victoria Smalls, Church School Superintendent, Walter Williams, Church School Secretary Francis Mallory, Church School Librarian James Gilliard. Next slide. These are people already elected. They ran unopposed. Commission on Christian Education, Victoria Smalls Chairperson, Walter Williams, by virtue of his office as Superintendent, Brenda Washington because of DMC, Anna Bowden because of YPD, Katrina Postel, YPD, and Sister... Shauna K. Gibbs, YPD, and Peggy Jane Scholarship. That's our Commission on Christian Ed. Next slide, Commission on Social Action, Clarice Gibbons Allen, Chairperson, Doug Pace, Phyllis Pritchett, Michael Lewis, Jackie Fulton, John Simmons, Katrina Postel. Amen. Church Administration, James Gilliard Chair, Sharice Bailey, Angela Douglas, Ahmaud Ward, Bernice Young, Dr. Chandra Metlock, and Donna Black. Health, Dr. Keith Taylor Chair, Dr. Chandra Medlock, Laura Brown Speaks, Sharice Bailey, Dr. Nanette Pearson, uh, Sister Sonia Shavers Jenkins, and Jerome Jenkins, Health. Membership, Evangelism, and Discipleship, Chairperson, Sister Jalinda Simmons, Sarah Harris, Peggy James, Rochelle Jones, Joan Simmons, Laura Brown Speaks, Barbara Winston. Commission on Mission and Fel Welfare, Brother Fred Hamilton Chair, Bernice Young, Mary Smalls, Joan Simmons, Anna Bowden, Jackie Legree, Constance Martin Witter. Those have already been elected. Let's show all of them a round of applause. <laughs> Remaining elections. And if there's some, if an, an error is here, please notify us. But on December 
7th on Zoom, we'll elect the young adult ministry officers, the Commission on Public Relations, the Commission on Stewardship and Finance, and also we'll make that adjustment with the um, delegate and the alternate. That'll be on December 7th, that's a Tuesday. Remember the last time we voted on a Tuesday, it only took like 10 or 15 minutes, and we're hoping it'll be the same. On December 12th, I'm gonna have all the young people, they've submitted their slates, but we're gonna actually hold their official election doing their Youth Sunday on December the 12th. So that'll be YPD and Young Voices of Praise. Is in the house, any ministry not reorganized for the conference year that's not listed so far? Okay. The next slide are the pastor's nominations for the steward board, senior steward board. Brother Fred Hamilton Pro Tem, Fred Hamilton Jr. Pro Tem, Clarice Given Allen, Derek Bowden, Angela Cogswell, Angela Douglas, James Gilliard, Samuel Harris, Lucille Canick, Elaine Mitchell, Effie Moon, Deetra Pinckney, Phyllis Pritchett, Jalinda Simmons, Victoria Smalls, Dr. Keith Taylor, Vernon Washington, and Anita Flood Wheeler. Amen. Now, this is what you've all been waiting on. And let me just say this. 14 wonderful candidates ran. And it was a close election. But only seven could be elected. I want to do this. I have the power to appoint junior. Now, junior doesn't mean age. Junior used to mean age. Junior trustees. Junior trustees are people who serve on the trustee board but do not have a vote in the official board meeting. And uh, only because he hasn't been with us, Brother Jackson has been a junior trustee. I want to reappoint him. And I want to say this to the seven that were not elected, any of you who would like to serve on the trustee board without a vote, don't, lose, don't get hung up on the name junior. Serve without a vote. We can appoint you as a junior trustee. But the trustees that were elected, and this is in alphabetical order other than the pro tem, who was appointed by the pastor, is Thurman Moon, appointed by the pastor. Jacqueline Fulton, Frank Gatson, Lucille, I'm sorry, Lincoln Canick, John Simmons, Ahmaud Ward, Walter Williams. Let's show them a lot of love. This was a tough election. I don't like trustee elections because so many good people are not elected. Next slide. We're going to do these few things and then we'll go home. COVID time capsules. Once we get out of the Thanksgiving break, we're going to be collecting COVID time capsules. We'd love for every family yeah, just not to even sit down and anymore. think of what you want the next pandemic to know about this pandemic. It might be about how the vaccine affected you. It yeah, might be about the initial isolation. I know that took me by surprise when I looked down the streets of my community and wasn't a car anywhere. Y'all remember that? Or empty shelves, family members who died. Whatever it is, we ask that the time capsules be about 90, the videos be about 90 seconds, and we're going to compile them. They don't have to be just Campbell's. Great videos, idea. Uh, but we're going to compile a great idea. some 90 second videos. You may make more than one. You're going to get a list in the bulletin of some things you might want to talk on. It could be anything. We're actually even going to go out in front of our church, and as people walk by, and solicit them to give us a 90 second time capsule video. There's so much that has happened in this pandemic that the world won't understand if we don't tell them. Uh -huh. Y'all know how y'all feeling. How'd you feel oh, when you went in that restaurant and nobody had on a mask the first time? You know how you felt. Put it in the time capsule. Any questions about the time, the COVID-19 time capsule? Any more clarity you need? If you can't do the videos, Sister Michaela will record, make an appointment. She'll record you here at the church. If you um, can do it on your iPhone or whatever device you have and submit it, that's fine. Uh, but we do uh, want to start collecting those when we get back from the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. I don't hear any questions. Next item 
oral histories. We're going to do the same with oral histories. Brother Ahmad Ward is working with that committee with the historic chapel. Um, but he doesn't know everybody's story. So we want some of you to volunteer. The oral histories don't have to be 90 seconds. They can be much longer. Uh, someone told me that Bluffton, and, they, and I see some Gatsons in here. They said the Gatson family will know about this, that Bluffton had a Rosa Parks long before Rosa Parks. Do y'all know that story? Someone told me that someone from Bluffton rode the bus, I think all the way to Texas or something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll find out if that's true. There's stories about people who, uh, a, a, a sister named Lily who rung the bell. Stories about walking under the old historic chapel. All kinds of stories. So we'll start collecting those at the same time. Any questions about oral histories? If you know someone we need to contact to get an oral history, someone that's not a member of Campbell, that has some information we need to record, start submitting that to the church office so we can start collecting these oral histories. The next item is real fun. Campbell Chapel received a $5,000 grant, and I, I have a, a video and pictures, and we'll put that out to you. We received a $5,000 grant from the ML King community, uh, Bluffton ML King Committee. $5,000. Y'all know, know when to praise the Lord. The grant is to help us trace the nine trustees that started our church. Let me tell you, this grant came with if that's not enough money, after you spend that $5,000 and showed us how you spent that $5,000, we'll give you another $5,000. We have contracted with CT houses, houses, I'm sorry, CT House Histories. That's the group that did the historic work on the Haywood House and on the um, um, Garvin House and other homes in the area. Uh, so they're going to help us to just get nine brief bios on the original founders of our church. The DNA committee, and we're reaching out to many of you in the DNA, for the DNA committee. The DNA committee is going from the top down. This is going from the bottom up. So somewhere in the middle we'll meet and we'll be able to discover who are ancestors of the Campbell Chapel Nine. Any questions about anything said so far? Now, this is your time to talk. Um, we can bring a mic to you, or you can come up to the podium. Anybody with a question, a comment, or a concern for the whole church, this is your moment. If they put anything in chat, if you all will let me know, we'll read it out loud. Everybody's satisfied. Everybody's happy. After that worship service, I understand that. You want to bathe in the afterglow. You don't want to get into business. But is there anybody with a comment or a statement? Hi. Um, I don't know if this is where I can say it, but... Well, let's all stand. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a comment. Come to the mic. You can be seated until the comment is over. I hope I'm saying this right. Oh, you can, y'all can hear me. Are we having uh, extra service during Christmas? You might have heard the announcement. We're having that um, Christmas Eve video celebration. On the calendar is Kwanzaa, and then we're having several worship events. We're going to in the in the constant contact. You'll see that we've been invited to the LDS to do a walkthrough with them and on our grounds that I think that's the weekend of the 10th and the 11th, we're going to have a block party. Uh, so there are several items on the Christmas schedule. Thank you. And we'll put that out. Thank you. We'll put it out. Uh, the calendar isn't closed. So if you want to add some item to it, please contact Brother John. You want to Okay, the two, that's a good question. All ministries, all those people elected should be doing their calendars and their budgets for 2022. All these new officers should be developing their calendar and their budget. And both deadlines, and I don't have the exact date, but we voted in the board meeting two weeks 
before the end of the year. Our secretary is saying two weeks, and we'll put what date that is out in next week, but you have um, two weeks before the end of the year to turn in your calendar and your budget for 2022. Amen, good question. Others, let's stay. Father, I thank you for the privilege of serving you and serving the greatest congregation in all African Methodism. Lord, we just thank you for the way you blessed us to worship today. We thank you, dear Lord, for the way you bless us every day. Now I pray your blessing upon those who are gathered in person and those who are gathered on Zoom. I pray, dear Lord, that you will meet all of us at our greatest place of need and shower down your love and mercy upon us. I pray that we'll listen to your voice and hear your plan for our lives, that we'll execute those plans that we might be in the proper position to possess your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.